Hello everyone, George here, and in the last video, uh, I had made uh, several mistakes actually. We had gone ahead and created a texture to be placed on these different boxes right here. That would be for uh, start settings and exit. I never applied them, and if we come over here, uh, I had made that texture so it was a single texture, and that single texture had different quadrants where the different text was. I should really have carved these UVs up a little bit better. So let's take a look again really quick at that texture, open recent, let's go to, or was it? Main menu, there we go. So we have one, two, and three uh, in each quadrant. So each one of these should have UVs only in those areas. So let's go to window, modeling, UV editor. You know what, let's see, UV, planar, what did I have? I have keep image within ratio. That's, that's probably what I want to do. You know what, let's just stretch it. Let's go to planar and do, uh, let's not keep proportions. So it fills the entire space. Right click, go to UV mode, and let's grab these guys. And of course, just uh, hold down the X key and move them halfway there. Grab these ones, move them up there. So that's that one. Let's find the next guy, which is this one right here. You know what? So long as they're correct, let's just do this manually. What is it? Uh, settings is over there. So X, use the X key to hold the X key to basically um, snap these to the grid. And I'm moving them into that quadrant right there. And finally, we have exit. So exit's right there. Let's grab these elements as well. X and these elements up there. And this one right there. And finally, that one there. And save. Okay. F8, save. Grab that one, that one, and that one. Uh, say, let's see. Edit delete i might as well delete all by type and let's do another file export on this little bit so file let's see send to unity select unity project because it does it remember nope it does not remember uh, let's do a night at georgie's select file send to unity selection and we're going to do security room come over here to unity now so let's go ahead and bring so we have the main menu right there of course we don't have a material so let's go right click create a new material call this main menu apply that to each of those individual objects. So we want this guy and this guy and that guy. Not the right program, is it? So let's grab this one, menu, put that one there, and this one there, and okay, so those are those things. So main menu, we have opaque, which it really should probably be cut out in our case. We wanna set up the texture, so we're gonna drag that into the albedo section of that, so things are, are rotated. I should probably fix this on the Maya side. So let's come over here. Let's just go to our modeling UVs, right click, grab these guys and rotate them. That should be enough, right? Come back over here and there we are. So now at least we have labels for these different screens so that when we're trying to figure out what we're doing in our game, they're gonna work right. So I guess the next thing we can work on is uh, maybe on this screen right here. I should put a, uh, a picture of the last night or the, the most distant night you've successfully completed. Now, obviously, we don't have a system yet for handling that, but that does raise some other questions that we should probably handle, and that is persistence of data. So what is it? I think um, six nights is what we want to deal with. So we should really have a new graphic uh, with all those different ones on it. Uh, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. So each number would have uh, what is that, a sixth of the, the UV space. So let's just go ahead and get that done. Save as and main menu, let's call it numbers. Let's see here. So that's not good. So let's go to edit, uh, preferences and guides. We'll go with it. I'm sure we're gonna have some problems. But let's just save this out and now save this as a PNG as well. FNAF, textures, numbers, save, okay. Going to Unity, let's go ahead and bring that in, import new asset, textures, numbers. There we are, from transparency please, thank you. So I'm envisioning that these will show up right here so that you can select or play the game from whatever the last night you were on. Uh, so for that, we're also gonna need a new usable, won't we? So create, let's just open up start. Let's save this as usable night. And we don't want this to have. Uh, what we're going to want to do 
I think is, um, and this is coming straight from uh, Unity videos on their website um, about persistence of data. We're probably going to create a, uh, a scene data repository. And inside of that, we're going to store critical information about where we are within the, um, the game, such as the current scene we should be working with. And this one, actually, let me see. Let's see. Start. I guess if you click on the night, it's going to set that data set to be whatever night it should start up. And it will then start that night up. And then when we get transition to the next scene, it's going to read that information or it's going to determine what scene to go to. Still haven't decided whether or not I'm making six separate scenes or if I'm just going to have the, uh, the code populate one scene properly. Because all the assets are fundamentally mostly the same and it's kind of the AI, the logic and so forth that's different, it would make sense to do that. I'm just not sure yet. So let's take the easy way out for the, for the moment and just assume we're going to have multiple scenes. The number is going to load in that particular scene. All right, that being said, reload all. This line should not exist here. Two slashes and save. And let's just make a note to ourselves. Um, uh, set the global scene here. Let's jump into Unity and we're going to create our data now. So let's go into scripts, right click, create a new C-sharp script. And let's call this, I guess scene, no scene manager is already used in Unity now. Let's call this, let's just call this scene data. We're gonna want this particular piece of information to persist through each scene. So we're gonna wanna call, what is it? Uh, don't destroy on load. And we pass in this dot, what, game object. So the idea is that between scenes, this thing won't be lost. Uh, what we are going to want to do, though, is make this uh, a singleton, uh, just like our other stuff to make our life easier. So let's do a public static uh, scene data with an instance. And in void awake. On awake, what we're going to want to do is see if instance, um, if uh, instance is equal to null, um, instance is equal to this. This is not what I want to do. If if uh, instance does not equal this. So the idea here is that we're going to be putting scene data in each of our scenes separately. Therefore, there's going to be a separate class. If scene data loads up, the first time scene data exists, it will populate the instance value. However, if we transition to the next scene, this is going to say, hey, don't kill me when we go to the next scene. Uh, saving data and information on the way out. This is just going to be our repository for information with transitions between levels, whatever that might be in the future. If our instance does not equal this particular instance, it means I've gotten a duplicate instance. So what I actually want to do is not set instance equal to this. I wanted to do a, uh, what is it, destroy this dot game object. We do not want this thing to exist. Else, instance is equal to this. And there's actually one thing I do want to change. I don't want this on start. I'm going to put this up here. And whoops, I'm going to put it right here. Just making sure I'm right here. Uh, if instance does not equal this, then get rid of it because it exists. Actually, I screwed this up. I did this in reverse because technically it's never going to be equal to this the first time. So let's do if instance is equal to null, then we're going to want to do this stuff. If it does exist, then we want to delete ourselves because it's already there and it's got important information about the prior scene. So we'll do it that way. Come back down here really quick and let's add this to our current scene. So minimize this and let's do create empty and just call this scene data. And let's go ahead and grab that, put that there. Let's go into, let's also reset this to the origin. Let's go to our prefabs. Let's make that a prefab. And that's something I'll just be dragging and dropping in every single scene we have. All right, so let's go to, so I guess technically in Maya, instead of creating the entire thing in Unity, I can create the UVs the way I want to and then translate those UVs to wherever they should be. One, two, three, four, five, six. I mean, really, I could just create six different images and have all six images just get swapped based upon whatever day you're on. What's easier? Now, right now, what's easier is just creating, you know, six different images. So let's just do that instead. Um, so let's take all of these guys here. All right, let's just blow these guys up. Uh, blow them up to, that's 500. Let's do 800 maybe, even more. 1200, even more. There we are. So you know what? Can we just do file, automate, let's see, what is it? Export, layers to files. Uh, let's do PNG 24. No, no, that's the problem. Trim layers, screwed it all up. So let's go ahead and hit run now. 
There we are, much better. Okay, there they are. A little large, so let's go to file. These are way too big. So let's just resize each one. Image, image size, and let's just make this 512. Save. Okay, there they are. Let's copy these on over. Copy, go to FNAF, A Night at Georgie's, Assets, Main Menu, New Folder, Number, Textures. And paste them in. That one's not right. Okay, come over here and make sure it all came in. Let's go to main menu, main them. There they are. Grab all of them. Textures. Let's go to set transparency. All good. Max size. I mean, really. Let's go back to Maya and put that plane in here. So right click, face, grab, right click, duplicate, pull it out ever so slightly. So we've got exit menu. This one's going to be, uh, I guess, number menu. Save. Let's go ahead and right click. Assign new material, call this Fong and edit, delete all by type history, Fong three, uh, number menu, menu underscore M. Let's go to color, file, number menu underscore, and this one too, number menu, number menu underscore bear, come to this guy right here, textures. I'm just gonna pull one of these off, I don't care which. Just grab, and of course, this is named wrong still. Fix that. Let's grab one. Now let's go to UVs, planar, best plane, apply, close, window, uh, modeling, UVs, and let's rotate this. There we go. All right, so then we'll have whatever current level you are on showing up right here. So let's grab everything now and bring it on over. Edit, delete, all by type, history, select all, file, send to Unity, selection, file, send to Unity, selection, security room, yes. Come over to Unity, that new graphic is included in there, but we do need to set a few things up for it, don't we? So let's grab it first. Oh, the pivot's in a bad place, isn't it? Kind of stuff like that bothers me. So let's jump in here, grab grab that object, modify, uh, center the pivot on it, hit W, just see where it's at. Let's go to modify uh, freeze transforms, and let's do, uh, not rotation, let's do the other two. Apply, save. Let's try that again now. Selection, security room, yes. Come back over to Unity, and now our pivot point's in a good place. Add component, let's add a box collider, and I believe we are going with a size of 0.2 for these, something like that, something pretty big. So the knight is gonna need access to all those different resources, so we might as well go ahead and give it access to that right now. So let's do a, a public material array of uh, numbers. Oh, I'm sorry, those are materials. I don't want materials, I want textures. So let's do textures, texture 2D. Save, come back over here. There we are, much better, and move them on over. Save. All right, so I'm gonna stop with that video. I know we didn't seem like we got a whole lot accomplished in this one, but we made some good foundational work. Okay, so there we are, we're in the game. We can see the different screens there. They look fine. Uh, th the setting is still probably too large. What is this? Uh, probably eight feet across, and that's way too big of a play space for what we're doing here. So I'll see you next time. Hope you enjoyed it.